given by Giselle Morsch in honor of her daughter, Nikki Webster, who is celebrating her birthday on April 24th. In your bulletin, you have a tear off, and we encourage you to tear this off so that you can register your attendance with us, and we encourage members, friends, and visitors alike to complete the registration form. This is also where you can tell us about any special prayer needs that you'd like to request, and also share if you plan to join us on Wednesday evening for supper, followed by study and prayer. The focus of our study in the coming weeks is on practical ways to pray in public. And speaking of Wednesday evenings, Cheryl, this is for you. <laughs> the choir meets at 7.30 on Wednesdays, and they would be super excited if you joined them. And they are going to be meeting in the choir room, which I understand yeah. is now open again. <laughs> so please, if you would like to add your voice to theirs, you are very welcome. And as a reminder, we also have Monday night Bible study via Zoom at 7 p.m. And the focus is on the Gospel of John. And we have prayer on Thursdays at 7 via Zoom. If you are someone who is seeking to heal from grief, we invite you to join our Grief Share program, which meets on Wednesdays from 6 to 8.30 in the Agape Room. And, I'm sorry, Tuesdays. Um, if you are interested in more information on this, you can contact Janine, and her email is included in the church bulletin. And now, let us calm our hearts and mind as we worship our Lord and Savior. <laughs>
to start the service. Did you know surveys show that 10 out of 10 singers say that you're warmer when you sing? <laughs> so, I hope that encourages each of you to join us. No, your real encouragement is to sing about our Lord. First is Christ, our hope in life and death, and then one of my favorite hymns, Now I Belong to Jesus. Stand and sing, please.
Friends, as we prepare to offer our prayers this morning, I invite you to open up the prayer list that has been included in your worship guide. And I invite you to scan this prayer list. Some of you have seen it this week. And some are seeing it just now. Some names may be familiar to you and some names may not. But I invite you to begin to offer up prayers for the names that you see. For the ones who are grieving, offer prayers in this moment. For the ones who are battling cancer and all manner of sickness, you pray. For the Lord of heaven and earth hears your prayers. For world concerns. Concerns across nation and continent and even the concerns down the street. Pray. Gracious and mighty and kind God, we are here this morning as a community of believers who believes in the power of prayer. The midst of so many things that we can carry, God, we know that we can carry it all to you. The one who hears, the one who is even advocating for us, the one who cares about our lives and our souls, we thank you, God. Thank you that this privilege has been given to those who are called by your name. And so this morning, God, we, we enter into the space because we know that you are here and you are present and your power is here and present to heal and set free and deliver and to make whole. God, make whole those who are experiencing lack this day. who have that thing that is missing on the inside of them and they are trying to seek with everything that they have to find and to be made whole and there you are standing. Behold, you are there knocking and I pray God that this day those who are without have everything they need in you. For our friends and our family for those who we have lifted up each week because they have suffered the death of a loved one, God, be their comforter and their strength. Remind them that, that grief is just love persevering and that you will give them everything they need to make it through. God, we pray for many amongst us where sickness has taken over the body. And God, we pray for your healing presence to rest and reside upon each one this day. Let every need be met, we pray, O oh Lord. for our nation and our world, and for world leaders, for those who make decisions that affect millions upon millions of people. God, we pray for righteousness to prevail, for goodness, 
and peace to take hold of this world that you so deeply love. A world by which you sent your only son to die because it is a world worth saving, a world worth loving. And God, we are praying that those who are called by your name begin to show forth that kingdom which is so present and near. God, we pray for ourselves in the times when we have been blinded by things like anger. We pray that you would allow your love to help us see love in all things. When our hands don't show up the way that they are supposed to the way that you have called us to do, God. We pray that you give us renewed strength to mend those things which are broken. And in the same way that you showed your feet to those who followed you, teach us to walk in the ways that honor you. So we are here this morning, God, and we are here to worship you, to place our trust in you, to declare your goodness. So therefore, we pray as you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Will the ushers please come forward? What a beautiful gift God has given us in the music that is that we have listened to this morning. Heavenly Father, on this third Sunday after Easter, we continue to be in awe and wonder at your generous love for us. We turn to you with grateful hearts for this day, for this place to worship that overflows with warmth as a community that cares for one another and those outside these walls. May we use these offerings which we are about to give to you to honor you and to reflect the love you have for us. May we be instruments of your peace and mercy here on earth to all we encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
because it is a beautiful, brisk morning here in Montgomery Hills Baptist Church. And I'm thankful that you all joined with us in worship and in singing and in offering prayers for our congregation and our community. I also wanted to acknowledge that our financial secretary, uh, Peggy Colbert, uh, most of us know because she has served well here for many, many years, uh, has had a quite um, serious finger injury that has also caused some, some complications. So Peggy remains in the hospital getting the best care that she can. And so in the midst of all of those prayers that we have offered, let us also continue to offer prayers for Peggy um, and for Chuck who's caring for her as well. Today I'm going to read a passage from Acts uh, and then I will share with you the title uh, of this sermon. But as we prepare, you kind of need just a tad bit of background. So leading up to the passage that we are about to read, there's a man who had been born paralyzed and had been laid at the entrance of the synagogue. And Peter and John, walking by and saw him laying there and they offered healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And our passage today is the aftermath of them offering this healing in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 5. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Speaking of that healing that they had done. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. Verse 12, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. And when they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight 
to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. This is the word of the Lord. And now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Say these words with me. There is no other name, no other name. by which we might be saved. Turn to somebody else, look in the sanctuary, give them a big smile and say, no other name, no other name. by which we may be saved. <laughs> Turn to one more person, find them, find them, find them, before, in front, behind, beside, and just say, no other name, no other name. by which we must be saved. <laughs> Everyone here, this morning has a name. Everyone. Some names are names that you have been given from your family. Other names you've been given from your parents. Perhaps you were named after somebody who was a long lost family member, perhaps someone who was highly revered in your family line and your family named you after that person. Or maybe you were named after a celebrity. I'll tell you what, after Beyonce made her debut with Destiny's Child, there were a whole lot of Beyonce's that were born the following year because they were named after her because of her gift of singing. Sometimes celebrities have a way of causing for names to be risen and elevated so that people are named after them. Or maybe it's not a musician. Maybe you were named after someone who was heroic. Maybe did something that was great or grand in the sight of many people's eyes, and so you were named after them. But everyone has a name. And some names have great meanings, and some names have no meanings whatsoever. <laughs> Nicknames come to mind. Well, you might have been nicknamed Pookie, or Spanky, or Junior, or Bubba, or Princess, or Junebug. All names because we all have a name. I was in seminary when I found out what my name means, Emmett. My name means truth. I was in Hebrew class and they said it's the sense of the name is a brimming desire to spill forth some profound secret. <laughs> Look at that. And I'm a preacher. <laughs> but the secret is out of the bag this morning. Because I came to tell you that there is a name that is greater than any other name. And that is the name of Jesus. Now I know that there are many names that we know and that we are aware of. You know the name Socrates from philosophy. You know the name Stephen Hawking from cosmology. You know Steve Irvin. He's the crocodile hunter from herpetology. And you know the name Jane Goodall from anthropology. And these are great names. Names that we all have heard throughout our age and names that we have heard spoken. Names of people that we have read. But but can I tell you something this morning? They are great names, but there is a name that reaches higher than those names. And it is a name that is written above every name, and that is the name of Jesus. It is the name above every name. Jesus was named... His 
name because it was chosen by his father. Mary and Joseph did not pick his name, no. His name was not picked by earthly parents, but his name was picked by his heavenly father. For the scripture says that he shall be named Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus' name means Yahweh or Jehovah is salvation. Which means at the very mention of his name is salvation. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. There is hope in the name of Jesus. There is wholeness in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is joy everlasting in the name of Jesus. There is peace and happiness in the name of everything that you need. It's found in the name of Jesus. There's something about that name. So the context of our text today is found in Acts chapter 3. That's the context of it all. Because we see Peter and we see John and they are on their way to the synagogue just like you were on your way to Montgomery Hills Baptist Church this morning, and they were on their way in the time of prayer, just, just two broke preachers without a dime in their pockets coming to worship God. And as they approached the synagogue, a man who was paralyzed at birth was there asking for money. He's asking for coin. And the type of coins that he was looking for had the image and inscription of Caesar stamped on the front and on the back. There, Peter and John, who had no money, they had no silver and they had no gold. They had nothing with Caesar's inscription stamped on the front and on the back, but one thing they did have was a relationship with Jesus. And so taking that man by the hand, they took him by the hand and they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And at the name of Jesus, they lift him up. And in the name of Jesus, his weak ankles came strength and at the name of Jesus he began to jump and leap and at the name of Jesus he leapt into the synagogue on his own two feet praising and worshiping God. The name of Jesus a man paralyzed is on his own two feet. The name of Jesus is a mighty name. The name of Jesus is a great name. And can I tell you this morning that, that, that Caesar's name written on that coin, it, it may have been able to get them an audience with the emperor's count, council, but it would not have given them deliverance from his ailment. The, the silver and gold might have been able to buy him some doctors, but it could not purchase him his peace. The Caesar's coins that, that he was asking for could have given him status, but it could not give him wholeness in his soul. These things can offer limited reprieve, but they cannot grant him salvation. For there is salvation in one name alone, and that is in the name of Jesus. And I just wanted to tell you this morning that if you want peace, and if you want wholeness in your life, if you want joy, and if you want salvation, if you want deliverance from sin, you can find it, and it is found in the name of Jesus. Those 
who know the name of Jesus, they know it because they know him. And because they have encountered him for themselves. For it is in the name of Jesus where one who has found themselves drifting on a way where shore could find an anchor for their soul. It is in the name of Jesus where one who is pressed on every side but they find that they are not crushed. It's not because they have the strength themselves, but because they have found treasure, which is Christ on the inside of them. And the one who has had their back against the wall, they are the one who discovers that it is Jesus who makes a way out of no way. I came by to tell you this morning that you can try him and you can see him. He is one that you can call on. The Lord, the one who saves. Hmm. But not only is Jesus' name a special name, but his name is a stainless name. The rulers and the elders question, how can this man who was born paralyzed who was born paralyzed from birth, how can he now be leaping and praising God? Turning to Peter and John, they ask him the question, by what power, by what name did you heal this man? There are many great names. The ones who are asking this question want to know who and in what name was the healing done. And you and I know that there are many great names that we have all seen and heard. Names that have done great things in society and in the Christian faith. Names like C.S. Lewis. That's a great name. Names like Harriet Tubman, that's a great name. A name like Eugene Peterson, that's a great name. Names like Mary McLeod Bethune, that's a great name. Names like Abraham Lincoln, that's a great name. These are, are great names, but can I tell you something this morning? Even in their greatness of their names, they were still marred by the stain of sin. And even when they lived and when they died, they died having been marred by the sin that mars each and every one of us. Oh, but then we're talking about the name of Jesus. For he was one who was sinless from life, from birth, all the way, even unto death. For scripture teaches us that he was the perfect lamb of God. A lamb without spot or blemish. He is the righteousness of God. He lived a sinless life. And so therefore he lived a stainless life. And because he was without sin, he could become sin for us. Bearing our iniquities and our transgressions. So that when he died, he died to the power of sin, death could not sting him, and sin couldn't hold him. Sin lost its grip, and death lost its luster, so that he could get up from the grave with all power in his hands. How does he get up? He gets up because he was without stain and without sin. One who can defeat sin can defeat death, and he rose from the grave with all power. Therefore, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess in heaven and on earth and below the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. But not only does he have a special name, not only does he have a stainless name, but he also has a saving name. Verse 12, 
There is salvation, Peter says, and no one else. For there is no other name by which humanity must be saved. I can imagine Peter, and I can imagine John thinking about the works of Jesus. I can imagine them recalling all of the times and all of the ways that Jesus was saving and healing. I can imagine about the time when Jesus was was teaching the people and they had gone several days journey and if they would have turned back they would have fainted from not having enough food and what does he do but borrows a few fish and some loaves and made a fried catfish sandwich offers it up to God and blesses and breaks it and all of a sudden hungry people were filled and there were baskets left over. I can imagine Peter and John remembering the wedding at Cana when the wine had run out and there they all with only pots of water and, and they came to Mary and, and Mary says, there is my son there. Whatever he says, do it. And, and somehow in the midst of what they were doing, they would bring the cup to their lips and water became wine signifying life. And I can see them remembering and imagining all of the times of which Jesus had healed and delivered and set free. There is no other name by which we may be saved. As the songwriter wrote, I was deep sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters, lifted me, now safe am I. All that the hymn writer was trying to say was that I looked upon Jesus in my worst and he came to save. So what is in the name of Jesus? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Through the ABCs. Let's go to the ABCs of Jesus this morning. Jesus is A. Our Alpha, Anointed One, and the Author and Finisher of our faith. He is B the bread of life, the bridegroom and bright and morning star. Jesus is C, the chief cornerstone, counselor, and he is the Christ. Jesus is D, that is the door and our deliverer. Jesus is E, Manuel. He is the one from everlasting to everlasting. Jesus is F, the fountain of life. He is the foundation of the church and he is a friend to sinners. Jesus is G, the, he's God, our guide, the good shepherd and our great physician. He is H, our hope, our help, our healer and the high priest. Jesus is I, the great I am and our inheritance. He is J, our joy and our justifier. Oh, I'm not done. He is K, king of kings and the king of glory. Jesus is L, Lord of life, love, the lamb of God, and he is the light of the world. I'm just talking about Jesus this morning. He is the Messiah, the mediator, and a man of many sorrows. He was a Nazarene and the new covenant in his blood. He is the Omega, the only begotten of the Father. But not only that, but he is prophet and prince of peace. He is Q, the quieter of the storms. And he is R, redeemer, refuge, righteousness of God and 
He is the resurrection of life. He is S, our Savior, the suffering servant and son of God. He is T, the truth and our teacher. He is U, the unblemished lamb of God. He is V, the vine and the victor over sin, death, and the grave. Jesus is W, the wonderful counselor, the way and the word of God made flesh. He is X, the exalted Lord, and he is Y, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Help me give praise to Zion's holy king, Jesus, the one by which we are saved. There is no other name by which we must be saved. Jesus can call on his name and he will meet you right where you are. Desire to 
dedicate your life, there's a check box for that. If you desire because you feel that God is calling you closer and you want to rededicate your life, you want to come back, there's a check box for that. You have that invitation this morning. Because there is no other name by which you can be saved.
Let us receive these words. May the one who seeks you find you when you fall. May the one who loves you take delight in your living. And may the one who sends you send you now in joy. For in your gladness and in your grieving, in your brokenness and in your healing, in your faithfulness and in your leaving, the one who made you and redeemed you is the one who keeps you still.